Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of BlockOn. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the ultrasound guided interscalene brachial plexus block or the C5-C6 root block based on the stop light or traffic light sign or the seagull pattern. Patient is placed in supine beach chair or lateral decubitus position. Patient's head is slightly rotated towards the opposite side. Please avoid excessive rotation of the neck as it may distort the normal anatomy. A high frequency linear transducer is preferred to perform this block. A 25 to 50 millimeter 22 gauge short beveled ecogenic nerve block needle is used to perform this block. For sole anesthesia purpose, I use 5 to 8 ml of 0.75% ropivacaine with 4 to 8 mg of dexamethasone as an adjuvant. In this technique, the scanning starts at or just below the level of the cricoid cartilage and medial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle with a goal to identify the carotid artery laterally. Then the transducer is moved laterally across the neck. Identify the anterior scalene muscle and the middle scalene muscle and the elements of brachial plexus in between them. It appears as the traffic light or stop light pattern as you can see here or seagull sign. The brachial plexus elements form the head, body and tail part of the seagull whereas the scalene muscles forms the wings. This technique is also known as the trace back technique because the interscalene brachial plexus is traced back from the supraclavicular area. The scanning starts at the supraclavicular fossa, identify the brachial plexus posterolateral to the subclavian artery. Then move the transducer in cephalar direction to identify the brachial plexus elements between the anterior and the middle scalene muscles. This block can be performed using either in-plane or out-of-plane technique. I personally prefer the out-of-plane approach. To know the reason, please continue watching this video. Place the needle tip in the tissue space between the two scalene muscles. Posterolateral to the brachial plexus element and inject the local anesthetic after negative aspiration. Needle should always be aimed in between the roots instead of directly aiming at them in order to minimize the risk of nerve injury. As the needle passes through the prevertebral layer of fascia, a pop is often appreciated. As you can see here, the injection of local anesthetic may displace the brachial plexus away from the needle. Remember, the neck is a highly vascular area and the anatomical variations are very common. So, always use color Doppler imaging during scout scanning to identify and locate the vessels in the proposed needle trajectory. Avoid injecting against higher resistance as it may indicate the needle nerve contact or intrafascicular injection. Single injection technique and use of lesser local anesthetic volume is preferred to avoid nerve injury and decrease the incidence of phrenic nerve block. A cephalocaudal pre-procedural scanning is very very important to identify the variations like intramuscular C5 root or bifurcation or split C6 or C7 roots. Scout scanning is also important to identify the nerves around the brachial plexus elements. The dorsal scapular and the long thoracic nerve course through the middle scalene muscle. Their appearance is hyperechoic with hypoechoic fascicles within them. 
these two nerves are at risk of needle trauma while performing the lateral to medial approach of in plane technique i follow either out of plane technique or a steeper needle trajectory in in plane technique to avoid entering the bulk of middle scalene muscle in addition a pns can be used to identify these nerves medial to lateral in plane needling is also avoided because the phrenic nerve may be encountered here it appears as a hypoechoic small structure with a hyperechoic border over the belly of the anterior scalene muscle hence out of plane approach may provide a safer route to interscalene brachial plexus block that's all for today thanks for watching catch you in the next video until then keep blocking keep rocking